Our second scripture reading this morning is Psalm 1. I invite you again to listen for God's word. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners trod, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, they meditate day and night. They're like trees planted by streams of water. They bear their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither, and all that they do, they prosper. But for the wicked, it is not so. They're like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment or sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As you know, I come from the greatest state in the Union, Oklahoma. That was unnecessary. And that state is remarkable for a number of reasons, not least of which because the greatest musical ever written bears its name, Oklahoma. (laughs) But there's one thing I really do not like about my home state of Oklahoma, and you're thinking to yourself, only one thing, Phil? Yes, only one thing. And it's in the musical. So you know the main song of the musical, Oklahoma, is the song, Oklahoma. And so Rodgers and Hammer Steen, Stein? I thought it was Steen. Doggone it. This sermon's already off the rails and we're a minute in. So Rodgers and Hammer Stein sat down to write the song for Oklahoma, and I imagine it went something like this. Rogers said to Hammer Stein, let's write a musical about Oklahoma. And Hammer Stein said, that's brilliant. It's the smartest idea you've ever had. What shall we write about? And then I imagine there was a long pause. And then Rogers said, well, it's windy there. And off they went. Because how does the song go? Oklahoma, where the wind comes sweeping down the plain, right? That's the song. And that's what I hate about Oklahoma. It's the wind. It is windy every day in Oklahoma. I grew up in Oklahoma City. It is on the plains. And it was always windy. Even a light wind was more than most wind in most places. Always windy, and it blew things all over the place. It blew trash into the air. It blew things across the street. On particularly blustery days, animals would be seen being blown across neighborhood streets. And just when you thought you had everything nailed down in Oklahoma that you were completely wind-resistant, spring would come, and we would get tornadoes. And God would smile at our preparations. Always windy. And so when the psalmist says that the wicked are like chaff, that the wind blows away, I, as an Oklahoman, have a strong impression of what that wind looks like. And I also think that if we're to understand, to truly understand the point of Psalm 1, which is that we ought to become trees, we can't do that unless we really understand the problem of wind. So we're going to talk about wind for a while, and then we'll circle back to the trees, I promise. So as I mentioned, it's a windy place, and I, in my infinite wisdom, decided in high school that I would run track. So this meant that I got to see some of the finest communities in all of Oklahoma. 
I've been to Fairview, to Alva, Bristow, Winniewood, Elk City, all the places you've been when you've gone on your tours of Oklahoma. And in every one of those communities, there was a track. And I, again, in my wisdom, decided that I would run the 400 meters. And the 400 meters means you sprint around the track, the whole track, one time. You go as fast as you can. There's no pacing yourself in the 400 meters. So what this meant is because it was the spring and because it was Oklahoma and because the track is a perfect oval, what this meant is that in Oklahoma, I got to experience all of the wind in its goodness and in its pain. Because it meant, first of all, this was good, that at least one portion of the track, I would have the wind at my back. And that was good great. Having the wind at my back eased my pain. It helped me run faster. I didn't have to breathe as hard. I felt like I was accomplishing something. People weren't pulling away from me as fast as they were in other parts of the track. It was great. And it made me think about times in my life, times in your life, times in our lives, when we feel as though we have the wind at our back. It's great, isn't it? Think about, think about those times when you really feel like you have caught the wind at your back, when everything is going your way. It's just perfect. Those are great, great moments in our lives. For me, a lot of those moments recently have happened on mission trips. If it's a good mission trip, man, do I feel like I've got the wind in my sails. I am moving perfectly. And I just went on a great mission trip. I went to India, and I had such a good time, and it meant so much to me. And as I was standing there, I spent every day teaching 1 Corinthians, and I would spend two hours with a group of students from around India and some from neighboring countries, and we would study 1 Corinthians. And for me, I love that sort of thing. I love hearing what they have to say. I love building relationships with them. And about halfway through, about halfway through, about four days in, I felt like we really started to hear each other and understand each other. And I started to get their stories a little bit. And they started to at least uh, kind of laugh at some of the things that I had to say. And there was one day in particular, and we were talking about uh, the ways in which the wealthy and the poor got along in Corinth, and they started to tell me that in some of their churches, the richest people sit at the front of the congregation, and the poorest people sit at the back of the congregation. And so then my whole notes were gone, and we spent like 30 minutes talking about how that worked and why that was and what as pastors we should do about that and should we care about that sort of thing, and it was great, and I loved it. And I had the wind at my back. All the problems that I had in my world or in my life felt like they had just been blown away as I stood and got to know these people from all over Asia. It's great, those moments when we have the wind at our back. But like I mentioned, the track's an oval. So that means that at one point, if the wind is at your back, it will also be in your face. Now, I'm not going to get into the geography and the physics of Oklahoma and wind. You will have to take my word for the fact that almost always the stretch that was into the wind was the home stretch. So already I had been running as fast as I could for 300 meters I had been trying to keep the other people near me, and then I hit a wall of air. It was like being hit in the gut with a sledgehammer. And then, worst of all, it didn't seem to affect the other people as much as it affected me, and so I watched them as they pulled away down the stretch. I am not lying when I say to you there was one race where I heard someone in the stands yell, oh wait, there's another one. (laughs) That was in Winniewood. It was terrible. 
It was terrible. You know, you feel like you're hanging in there. You feel like you're doing okay. You're tired. You're fighting. You're doing everything you can. And then the wind turns and just smacks you in the face. And that's just the worst, isn't it? Because if we've had times in our lives where the wind is at our back, we have certainly had times in our lives where the wind is at our face, where it feels like everything we try to do is more difficult. It feels like there is nothing, nothing that can be done to change our circumstances. And it's particularly bad when it flips. So one of the nice things about leaving the country is you leave the country. So all the good and all the bad of our home, we leave behind as we travel. And so I'm in India, and the wind is in my sails. And each morning I would get up and I would get on the internet, which was a huge mistake, to see what had happened while I was sleeping. And one night, the University of Kansas, my alma mater, had played their arch rival, the Kansas State Wildcats, in basketball. And I thought, well, I wonder what happened in this game. And I looked, and then I saw what had happened in that game. There was a brawl. Not just kind of a kerfuffle, not just a little bit of pushing. There was a brawl. At my alma mater, in the field house that I love, there was a brawl. At the end of the game, the Kansas players took exception to something the Kansas State players did. They started to fight, and then it spilled over into the crowd. And the part of the crowd that it spilled into was the part that was for accessibility. So the people sitting in that section were people that were in wheelchairs and had limited mobility. And their caregivers who were with them leapt up and tried to keep these six foot nine. 20 year old college athletes from falling into or pushing over the people seated in that section. And then one of the players, embarrassingly enough, from my alma mater, decided to pick up a stool as if he were about to hit one of the Kansas State players with it. Luckily, a coach was able to grab the stool and pull it away from him. This is not the WWE, this is real life. It was embarrassing. It was sad, and it reminded me of this kind of undercurrent of anger and rage that exists in the place that I had left behind. This week, I'm going to Kansas City, and I'm going to the Big 12 basketball tournament, and I will be wearing my Kansas stuff, and there will be, for whatever reason, people there wearing Kansas State stuff. And we'll be standing together, and we'll be walking past, together and so, past each other, and some of those interactions will be fine, but other times, I'll be able to see the anger. For me, seeing that, seeing it so close to something I care about, and then having it reminding me of what I perceive happening culturally, took the wind out of my sails and put it back into my face, if even only for a moment. Sometimes the wind is at our back, sometimes it is at our face. Now here's where the trees matter. If we can't become the tree planted by the stream of water, if we can't sink our roots, then the tone, structure, and substance of our lives will be completely dictated by whichever way the wind is blowing. If the wind's in our face, it is a bad time. If the wind is at our back, it's a good time. But if we cannot sink our roots into God's word, into God, into our brothers and sisters in Christ, into those things which we value and believe, which transcend ourselves, if we can't do that, then we will spend our lives being blown backwards and forwards by whichever way the wind is going. And it's not just when it's blowing into our face that we have to beware. 
even when it's at our backs. I have this propensity. Think about the good times. Think about the best days of your life. Think about those times when the wind was fully at your back. We tend to think that those are the right times. Those are the correct times. Those are the times when we've managed to structure everything perfectly. My wind at my back moments might teach me that the only way that I can really feel good is to go on mission trips. And while those are lovely, that is not true. There is one fact, one fact that I, we have got to remember about what we're doing here and the God we worship. There is one fact, and it is this, that God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love permeates all that we do. And my ability to love other people, my ability to embrace that love, my ability to perceive that love does not change whether the wind is in my face or at my back. It does not change if I'm standing in a classroom in India or if I'm in a concession stand line next week with drunken Kansas State fans all around me. That does not change. Whether there or here, whether good day or bad day, God is love. I abide in God. God abides in me. That is a root. That is a tree planted by streams of water. There are more of them. The ways in which our faith shapes our daily lives is the degree to which we will be able to stand in the midst of all this wind. As we are able, as we are able to sink our roots into the goodness of God, the love of God, the gifts of God that we have received through Jesus Christ, the love that we share for one another as brothers and sisters, as we are able to do that, we will be able to stand as the wind blows. And if we can't do that, if we can't do that, then we are just chaff. Amen.